El Shaddai, we acknowledge you. We adore you. We worship you. We honor you, God. We thank you for being our strength, our help, our source, the horn of our salvation, our truth, our defense. We thank you for being loyal when we were in a courtroom situation. We thank you that God, you were our doctor, surgeon, when we were in an illness situation. We thank you, God, that you are our more than enough God. Hallelujah, we thank you that you have been faithful faithful to your word you did say that you would supply our needs according to your riches in glory and for that we give you praise for that we give you honor this evening will you worship him with me this evening hallelujah as you tell two persons we're going to be tearing down evil altars in our homes this evening hallelujah i don't think they heard you we are tearing down evil altars this evening in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth hallelujah glory to his amazing wonderful faithful name hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus thank you mighty god hallelujah we worship him we honor him we adore him there is none like him he's worthy he's worthy and so you know what to do as you join the broadcast you go right ahead and you hit that share button and by doing so you allow your friends and your loved ones hallelujah to experience the glory you allow them to hear from the throne room of grace hallelujah there is a woman that you know who needs to hear the word of the lord this evening there is a man who needs to hear there is a child who needs to hear hallelujah and so i give you some time to hit that share button real quick hallelujah welcome one and all my name is shadeen anglin this broadcast is being streamed from kingston jamaica thank you to those persons who are watching from across jamaica hallelujah it's good to have you hallelujah thank you jesus tell two persons we are tearing down altars tonight hallelujah we are tearing down some things tonight and as we pull down some things as we mash up some things the expectation is that hallelujah freedom will come to your home this evening hallelujah as you obey the instructions of the Holy Ghost tonight hallelujah the expectation is that many of you who are struggling to sleep who are struggling hallelujah to be comfortable in your own home you will have peace that is the intention that is the expectation can two persons say Lord fill my cup tonight 
let it overflow tonight i don't hear you on youtube tell two persons i want the lord to fill my cup i want the spirit of the lord to illuminate my spirit lord enlighten me tonight lord touch my ears so i may hear you touch lord my heart so i may receive you father created me a clean heart even now renew a right spirit within me lord god i repent before you of everything i have done today and in recent times for which i have not yet repented i repent god of self-righteousness i repent of pride i repent of ignorance and arrogance i repent mighty god of selfish ambitions i repent father of lies dishonesty I repent, Jesus Christ, for not being loving toward my brothers. I repent, Father God, for doing that which is ungodly and that which is detestable in your sight. I repent, God, this evening for all the wrongs that were not only done by me, but also by my loved ones. I repent, mighty God, because you are holy. Hallelujah. And I understand that your word has made it clear that if I render iniquity in my heart, you will not hear but i want you to hear me tonight so i'm coming clean before you i'm not putting on anything i'm not taking off anything i'm coming to you just as i am and i'm saying the great i am that i am the great redeemer the great restorer oh glory to god i come to you asking for forgiveness forgive me lord forgive me heal me lord heal me deliver me lord deliver me cause your word lord god to stir up something in my spirit cause your word lord god to cause transformation in my life and in my situation cause your word to come oh god to life in all my circumstances i don't just want to be a hearer of your word tonight but i want to be a doer can somebody say be a doer tonight be a doer as the holy ghost speaks be a doer as the holy ghost instructs tell two persons i choose to be a doer tonight. Are you a doer yourself? Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. We are tearing down altars. Tell two persons, are you ready to tear down altars? Tell two persons that the word of God is coming forth in power, in full assurance, and in the Holy Ghost. And when it comes with the Holy Ghost, some things will be broken, some things will be dismantled, some things will be shattered, some demons will be scattered. As the word comes in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I borrowed this phrase, but I thought it is appropriate to re reiterate it at this moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Or regurgitate it at this moment. Someone says, okay, God, you be glorified while the enemy be horrified and your people be edified. So God, edify your people. Horrify the enemy with your word tonight. In the name of Jesus, we weaponize your word tonight and decree a righteous decree that in whatsoever atmosphere your word is heard there shall be immediate transformation lives must be touched no one will see Shadim Messiah no one will hear Shadim but you are the only person who will be heard you are the only person who will be magnified you are the only person who will be talked about after the broadcast you are the only person to whom individuals will attribute power attribute rather power you are the only persons to whom individuals will attribute any kind of hallelujah honor messiah we give it to you we owe it to you we put you alone on a pedestal god in jesus mighty name in jesus name and as you join, you are welcome to indicate where you're watching from. Tell two persons we are tearing down altars. 
tell two persons the sermon is an instructive sermon tonight. And I don't know about you, but I really like when the sermons come in this way. It means that there's something that you can apply in real time in your midst. So as the word is coming forth, you are being stirred and being led to do something immediately. And so I just want to use this opportunity to welcome again our friends who have joined on YouTube. Just a reminder, you can actually turn on your subscription button so that you can be notified every time we are live. A special welcome to Marsha who's watching from St. Anne. I want to welcome Sister Ruth from the UK and Novlet. I also want to bless up Brother Mikey as well. They're all listening from the UK and y'all know that it's some minutes to one o'clock. It's probably even later than that in the UK. And so we want to give God all the glory for these individuals who have sacrificed their time, their sleep to be in our midst tonight. Put your hands together. It means a lot. It really does mean a lot and it tells that God is doing something because you didn't just sacrifice your sleep hallelujah for anything but we want to thank God that he's in our midst I want every person to just lift up your hands right now all over this room lift up your hands children you too lift up your hands father in the name of Jesus we thank you, God, that your word is already anointed. We thank you that the vessel to deliver your word has already been anointed. We thank you, mighty God, that heaven has already sanctioned the word that shall be proclaimed today. We thank you, God, that your stamp of approval is upon your word today. We thank you, God, that your word shall go forth with such level of efficacy, oh God, that we will see and hear about the results. Father, we thank you that your kingdom is being enlarged, it's being established, it's being expanded right across the globe. We thank you, oh God, for this unprecedented opportunity, oh God, to say thus saith the lord even in times such as this lord god when all kinds of backsliding is happening there's a great level of apostasy that is happening we thank you that in spite of all the chaos in spite of all the odds we can still bow down to our true and living god and without fear Say, I am a child of the King. We thank you, God. We bless your holy name. We are tearing down altars this evening. And so I want you to turn your Bible with me to the book of Deuteronomy. Hallelujah. That Deuteronomy, glory to God, Hallelujah. Ramild. Hello. I don't know if I got your name correct, but she's watching from California. It's good to have you. Welcome. Hallelujah. Zenda from Portmore. It's good to have you. Welcome to all the people who are watching from Portmore. Valerie from St. Kitts. It's good to see you as well. As you turn your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 12, just greeting a few persons. Carola. Carola. <laughs> Greetings to you, David. It's good to see you as well. Hawford, you are a child of the King indeed. God bless you. Charmaine, God bless you as well. Anne Marie, God bless you. It's good to have you. Phyllis, as usual, God bless you, my sister. Hallelujah. We're tearing down altars. Okay. A L T A R S. Evil altars. Amen. Virginia, you're a child of the King. And no weapon formed against you shall prosper in Jesus' mighty name. Just let me know when you are in Deuteronomy chapter 12. Let me know once you're there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So somebody said, Shadim, I see you sweating. Of course she does. All the time. AC, no AC. She still sweats, eh? Hallelujah. Hertha, how are you? 
that I'd like to read before I actually get into Deuteronomy 12. Because what we're about to see in Deuteronomy 12 is coming off the heels of another command or another word that was given to the Lord's people through the mouth of Moses. So I thought that I would read the last two verses of Deuteronomy 11, then I will go into Deuteronomy 12. And I want to go all the way down to verse 3. Let's see what the Lord does. So again, I'm going to read the last two verses of Deuteronomy 11. Then I will go into Deuteronomy 12. Ready? For you shall pass over Jordan to go in to possess. Tell someone, you shall pass over Jordan to possess. Hallelujah. I don't think they heard you. Tell someone, you shall possess. P-O-S-S-E-S-S, -S -S -S, possess. Amen. You shall possess the land which the Lord your God gives you, and you shall possess it and dwell therein. And you shall observe to do all the statutes and judgments I set before you this day. Tell two persons, you shall observe to do. Hertha, you shall observe to do. Althea, Samantha, you shall observe to do. Ingrid, you shall observe to do. Karine, you shall observe to do. Janiel, you shall observe to do. Wendy, same to you. You shall observe to do all the what? Statutes and judgments which the Lord will give unto you. Okay, fine. Let us jump to chapter 12 and see what these statutes and judgments entail. Amen. These are the statutes and judgments which you shall observe to do in the land which the Lord God of your fathers give you to possess all the days that you live upon the earth. Let's hear them. You shall utterly destroy. Tell two persons. You shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which you shall dispossess, hallelujah, served their gods. Upon the high mountains and upon the hills, and under every green tree. Tell someone, you shall utterly destroy. Okay, we're setting the foundation, amen? Verse three, and you shall overthrow, I want you to put the word overthrow on your screen in caps, please. Overthrow. You shall overthrow their altars and break their pillars and burn their groves with fire and you shall hew down the graven images of their gods and destroy the names of them out of that place. You shall not do so unto the Lord your God. In other words, you shall not commit idolatry as the other people have. Can someone say, speak, Lord, speak. Speak by your spirit. Speak, Lord. I want to hear from you this evening. Say, Lord, speak. Your servant heareth. Are there any servants who are hearing tonight? Are you really hearing? Are you really ready to hear? And not just to hear, but also to do as you are told to do. Are we ready? Is that a yes? Hallelujah. Let us go into the word. Now, one of the things I'd like to say is that the word of God is like man's guide. Hallelujah. Manual, daily manual. 
In the same way that when you purchase a refrigerator, a stove or any appliance, it comes with a manual. It comes with a guide, hallelujah. The word of God is man's guide for living, amen. And I believe that this guide, it, it entails information or contains information that speaks to every area of our lives as human beings. When you talk about war, it's there. It tells you what to do and how to position yourself for war. When you talk about food, how to treat with food, whether someone is poor, lacking, etc., whatever the subject is that you can possibly think of, it is there. When you talk about hypocrisy, it's there. When you talk about lying tongue, it's there. When you talk about lawlessness, it's there. Just about everything that you and I could possibly think of is spoken of in this great guide that has been given to us by the Holy Spirit. The word of God would have made it clear that we came about having what we know as the Bible or the word of God after holy men of God who got inspiration from the Holy Ghost wrote as they were inspired. So we're not reading the piece of writing of someone who had absolutely nothing to do one day and just decided to write. We're talking about a word that was put together, a book that was put together, hallelujah, by the Holy Spirit. And, and the writings thereof were given by inspiration of the Holy Ghost. We have heard that in the word, all scripture were given by what? Inspiration of God. So nobody was presumptuous to just write down. In fact, maybe there were, but as for this book that we have today that we appreciate as the word of God, it was inspired. Tell two people, it was inspired. And so guess what? We're about to talk about, hallelujah, an element of our lives that we probably did not recognize is spoken of in the word. So today the Holy Ghost has sent me here to open it up to you, as I said before, hallelujah, just about everything that you and I can think of, every matter in this life that affect us, hallelujah, is spoken of in the word. And one such matter is this. Now, God, hallelujah, has set out for the people of Israel, hallelujah, guidelines as to how they were to possess the land which he was given to them, giving to them, hallelujah. Before they got into this land, he made it very clear what they were to do and not do. We're talking about a people who were set apart by God, taken from Egypt, hallelujah, now are going to go into a place that is occupied by some strangers, occupied by some people. The people, as we know, are the Canaanites. And we know that there are seven nations, at least seven nations who made up the Canaanites. Hallelujah. We're talking about the Gergashites. Not sure if I pronounced it correctly, but we're talking about the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, and you name it. Oh, glory to God. They were all, hallelujah, strangers to the people of God. They served strange gods. They participated in what you call strange worship. They performed strange rituals. They prayed strange prayers. They offered strange sacrifice. And everything about their culture was strange. Tell two persons, I understand that so far. Hallelujah. Now God, being the all-knowing God that he is, is already aware of the condition in which these people, these strange people are living. The all-knowing God whose eyes are all over the place, seeing everything, nothing misses him. 
is already aware that a lot of idol worshiping occurs in this land of Canaan. So as a protective measure, tell two persons, as a protective measure, the Lord has now given through the mouth of Moses some statutes and judgments that he says his people ought to, hallelujah, abide by or adhere to in order to find success in this land. Now it's interesting that the very thing that God is about to tell them is something that you and I need to hear about and perhaps have read the scripture, hallelujah, but did not see it for what it really is. I want to break it down for you right now. The people of God were going into homes that were occupied by people they didn't know. They were going into spaces in which some people who worshipped all kinds of demons were living. God, being fully aware of that, said, my people, here's what I want you to do in order to remain safe in those demonic homes. When you go there, one of the first things I want you to do is I want you to tear down their altars and their high places. God, what are you saying? You got to break it down some more because I don't really understand what you're saying. People of God, just like you and I, who for some reason have to move from one place to the next. The people of God were doing same. And just like the people of God were told or made aware of the demonic presence that exists in the place in which they were gonna occupy, here comes God bringing you the word this evening to make you know that when you and I are moving from one address to the next, from one home to the next, many of us are going into a territory, hallelujah, in which were all kinds of practices that were ungodly. Are you hearing me? When we move from one location to the next, sometimes we move from one rent house into the next. But we all know that in that house, there were some other occupants who used to live there. Oh, glory to God. And many different occupants over the years. God is trying to show you, Marlene, hallelujah, that the lifestyle of those who lived there before was unholy. God wants you to know that when those persons who lived there before you got there were there, they erected some things in their home. They worshiped some things. They practiced some things. And if you don't do something about it, even as you have now occupied that space, then it will be misery and torment for you and not just you, but also your children. Oh, glory to God. Now, one of the things I want us to understand is that even as it was in the days of Abraham and in the Old Testament days, whenever the men of God would go to a new location, they would raise up or build an altar to the Lord. We saw it in the life of Abraham how Abraham built an altar when he was in Bethel. And when he went to another place, he every time he moved, he built an altar. Can somebody tell somebody that there is an imitator, someone who emulates what are done in the kingdom? In the same way how Abraham and those in the Bible did some things to honor God. The enemy does the same thing, except it's being done on the dark side. In the same way, the people of God can build unto God an altar of prayer. When people who are not committed to the Holy Ghost go into a space, one of the first things that they do, oh glory to God, is to make connection with the thing from which they gain their source, with the thing from which they gain their strength. And when you talk about their source,
source, which is their God, it is interesting what their sources are. We're talking about many people who from morning or as morning come. Spliff, is that what you call it? They're smoking. They build an altar, hallelujah, through the smoking ritual. Hallelujah, oh glory to God. Many persons, once they move, hallelujah, they, they connect. And the thing that gives them strength, the thing that gives them joy, the thing that makes them feel lightheaded or light are those things that are unholy before the living God. What makes some people feel strong and what gives some people joy is sexual immorality for many. And so once they move to an address, the first thing that they do is to ensure that they do that thing. Hallelujah. Because they're connecting with their source of strength. They don't recognize that it is idolatry. They don't recognize that the mere fact that they cannot do without it. The mere fact that they have to do it every day in order to feel like they're existing or feel like they're somebody, they don't recognize it is a God. That thing that they're addicted to has become a God. They don't recognize it, but we're here to point it out for what it is. Hallelujah. There are many who you and I know, they're on the other side, them lean. That's what we say in Jamaica. They're not straight. They practice same-sex stuff, oh glory to God. Hallelujah. And these are some of the things that they do in their space, in their home, connecting with their source. And we're saying that source is your God, lowercase g-o-d. So they build altars through these immoral practices, hallelujah, to their gods. And so when you and I go into those spaces and places, hallelujah, in the realm of the spirit that you cannot see with your naked eyes, are some demonic altars on beds or where the bed used to be erected, are some demonic altars in some corners and some closets, come on, you went in there empty, the space is empty, you move in your things, you move into this so-called new house. But who are the people from whom you are purchasing this house? Is there a possibility that even the owners of this house dedicated the space, dedicated the house to some God, lowercase g? Why are we getting here? We're going here because I want you to know that if you have not sanctified your house, if you have not dedicated your house, your space to the living God, then there is a high possibility that you are entertaining some altars, some high places in your midst. You are entertaining the spirit of some gods who are called or conjured up in your midst. Oh, glory to God. I'm speaking about the reality of many individuals because many persons, the house in which you live is not yours. You rent, oh glory to God. Other persons were living there before you got there. You don't know what they did. You don't know what kind of life they lived before you. Could it be that because of their practices that were ungodly, it is the reason why your child keep running away saying, I'm seeing a woman or I'm seeing a man. Could it be that when you try to get a nap, you're just dozing away? Somebody's trying to touch you. Somebody's trying to hurt you. Could it be? Oh, glory to God. People of God, I'm here to open up your eyes to the reality of the demonic realm, of the realm of the spirit. What I want you to understand, people of God, is that everything in the Bible is not meant to be taken literally. And another thing I want you to understand is that some of the literal examples that were given in scripture were meant to open up your eyes to some reality in the spirit. 
Hallelujah. I want you to understand that the ungodly Canaanites, hallelujah, they represent the lifestyle of those who are not in submission to God. And if you're not submitted fully to God, hallelujah, because it can't be partial submission. And you call it submission. If you're not totally submitted to the Holy Ghost, it means that you are worshiping another God. And it means that you're getting your strength from some other God. It means that you're getting guidance and direction from some other master. Because two masters cannot be instructing you at the same time. Oh, glory to God. If that happens, then there'll be nothing but confusion in your life. So one has to serve one master. So there are many persons who have been serving all kinds of gods through practices that are not of God. And they will never be of God. Oh, glory to God. And because they have done those things all the time that they lived in that space, hallelujah, God says there are altars there. Those practices have caused high places to be erected. Those practices have caused altars. An altar is a place where sacrifice is made. Altar, an altar is a place where humanity meets divinity. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. So God says, if you want to be able to have peace in your house, if you want your children to have peace and not be running away feeling scared all the time, God says you have a responsibility. And that responsibility is for you to become radical right now. And as you get radical, God says, uh, pull down those high places. Tear them down, oh glory to God. You got to pull them down. You got to root up some things, hallelujah. If you want to have peace in that space, uh, this is the essence uh, of this hallelujah command that was being given to the children of Israel. Come on. You're going into the space uh, of some people who don't know your God. Uh, you're going into the space uh, of some people who don't fear your God. Uh, you're going into the space uh, of some people who accept uh, all kinds of filthiness. Oh, glory to God. God says, if you want to be holy before me uh, and you want me and my presence uh, to come into your home, uh, you've got to break down the norms uh, and traditions uh, that have left, oh glory to God, some residues in your house. So you gotta tear down the altars, pull them down, mash them up in the spirit because you cannot see them in the flesh. Oh glory to God. You can't see them. And that is why for many of us, there's a mystery sore somewhere. A sore suddenly appeared. Nothing scraped you. You can't recall hitting on anywhere. But all of a sudden, there's a mystery sore on your body. All of a sudden, there is a mystery whale on your body. Hallelujah. You didn't fall. You didn't trip. Nobody beat you. But all of a sudden, there are some marks, strange marks all over your body. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. You didn't come in contact with anyone. You didn't contact anyone with COVID. But all of a sudden, you can't walk. All of a sudden, you have a high fever. All of a sudden, you just want to sleep. You don't even want to do anything. All of a sudden, God says, do you not see that there are some high things around you that need to be broken down? Do you not see? Do you not see? I want some people to begin to get up because we did say at the beginning that this was going to be an instructional sermon. Amen. A sermon that will come with a lot of instructions. And so as the Lord speaks, 
I want some persons to get radical because we're going to be pulling down some altars. Hallelujah. So perhaps you did not pull down the altars and right now you're having some effects. See, the, the impact of not pulling them down is being experienced, is being felt. And so I want to help some persons, hallelujah, to, to, to do something before something do you. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Strange people, strange practices, strange norms. Hallelujah, they call on holiness, holiness, and on righteousness, righteousness. They have no standard, everything is just acceptable. When we know we serve a holy God. So here's the thing. Since they didn't have any standards and their master who is Satan, he endorses everything that is not of God. Then you, right now, you're going to take authority and you are going to raise up some godly standards in your own home right now. Oh, glory to God. Remember we said that an altar is a place where sacrifice is given. And we're talking about persons who have lived in our spaces, oh glory to God, who dedicated some time to all kinds of worship, meditation, and you name it. You're talking about persons who have offered up some worship that you and I are not accustomed to. Oh, glory to God, an altar, an altar. You're talking about a place where all kinds of utterances were made. Religiously, all kinds of utterances were made. Who is the individual who lived where you're living now? Who, who used to live there before you? What, what, which God did they serve? What kind of covenant did they make with their God where you are right now? What kind of agreement did they make? And even your forefathers, some of you, it is your family land, family house. But what were the utterances that they made? What were the practices that they did before you got there? At some of these altars, saith the Holy Spirit, there are some things that are screaming against you and screaming against your children. There are some spirits that are crying out against you and crying out against your children. There are some spirits crying for your destruction, your deterioration, and not just yours, but also the destruction and deterioration of your children. But you have been given power because God says, behold, I give you what? Power, power to tread, power to trample, power to stomp upon serpents, scorpions, anything that has venom. God says, if it has poison, if it has venom, if it stings, you've got power over it. Oh, glory to God. If it is flexible, oh, glory to God. If it is untamed, hallelujah, you still have got power over it. So I want some people to begin to stand in the power that was given to you by your Lord Jesus. And I want you to start pulling down altars, tearing down altars in your home. Pull them down because you know something to write. Tear them down. Open up your mouth and begin to take authority. Take authority. That mystery sickness could be resulting from an altar. That behavior that you can't understand, that unexplainable behavior, that unexplainable pattern is, oh, can, can I just say something? Okay, so we all know that in the book of Acts, the word of God says that there was a man called Cornelius, don't it? Is that his name? You're sure? You're not sure. The word of God says that the angel of the Lord 
came to Cornelius to tell him, Cornelius, your arms have come up before God as a memorial, don't it? Why did I use this as an example and what is the point I'm getting at by highlighting this scripture? Can I tell you something? In the same way that in the kingdom of God, you can say things and do things to God, make oaths to God and practices before God that come up as a memorial, tell someone it is done on the dark side too. The imitator does it too. So when those who do not submit to God through the Holy Ghost, when they carry out their demonic practices, their acts, immorality, acts of sexual immorality, especially those who are lean and stuff like that. Some of the things that they said during their acts, some of the things that they've done, O Kana Messiah, it's coming back as a memorial in the spirit. And so you and I, we have got to intercept every, every tradition in the spirit of the devil. Every evil tradition needs to be broken. Every evil culture needs to be broken. Every evil memorial needs to be broken in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. You've got to stop the flow. You've got to stop the pattern. You've got to break it into pieces. You've got to dismantle it. You've got to shut it down with your mouth. Come on, believers, arise and shine. Begin to shut down some memorials. Begin to shut down some things that are coming to the remembrance of Satan. Because some people who are ignorant of God's laws and statutes, they've made some presumptuous utterance. They have made some utterances, oh, glory to God, spitting in the face of God. You now have got to tear those things down. God God says, this exists, my daughter. This thing exists, my son. That's why you have the word to guide you, to guide you into all truth, that these things do happen. You've got to rededicate the home in which you live because somebody else has dedicated it before you got there. You now need to determine to whom or to which God you want your house to be dedicated. Oh, glory to God. Because there are many gods out there, lowercase g, Tell someone there are many gods. So you have got to make the distinction between your God and all the other gods that are out there. Tear them down. Tear them down. Let's go in the word. You shall utterly tell two persons. You shall utterly destroy their places. Listen up. You see that word, utterly? I want you to put utterly on your screen and I want you to put utterly in caps for me. Utterly. You see that word, utterly? It's from the Hebrew word, abad. A-B-A-D, I want you to put A-B-A-D on your screen, utterly. God says you shall utterly destroy, listen up. Utterly means abad in Hebrew, and abad means destroy. Abad means perish. Tell someone abad means to destroy. Okay, God says you shall utterly destroy. You see that word destroy? It is from the Hebrew word abad. So utterly and abad are from the same Hebrew word. My God. In other words, you shall Messiah abad abad. Makand. I tell two persons, you shall abad abad. What is that saying, Holy Ghost? Come on, glory to God. They're coming from the same word, which means to destroy. So you shall destroy, destroy Marlene. You shall destroy, destroy Winsome. In other words, you shall double destroy Rakandaya. Any tradition, any culture, any custom, any norm that does not bring honor and glory to God. You shall double destroy. You shall abad, abad. And when the word of God uses 
any word twice. It is for emphasis. It ought to show you that whatever is being said, the context in which this word is being used, it is of great significance, extremely important. So tell someone, you shall abide, abide, pull down, mash up until there is no sign of it left. Rip it apart, pull it down, uproot it, dismantle it, saith God. Mashaya Rababa Katiendo Rababaya Sataya Abad Abad Double destroy. I want some people who know that you don't just have authority, but you have power. Because, see, to, to deal with these altars, you're going to need more than just authority, you're going to need power. Your authority came through your belief in Jesus Christ. You have authority, but you need the power through the Holy Ghost. I want some Holy Ghost filled individuals to stand right now because it is a sure thing that you don't just have authority, but you have power. And we're dealing with some altars right now. You don't need your pastor to come and do this for you. You don't need the evangelist to come and do this for you. You can do this yourself. You got to lift up standards in your own home. Come on, people of God. Yes, you can do it. Some help sometimes. But, but, but don't think that you can't do this. Come on, don't think that you don't have the power to do it. It. You've got it, save God. Maya. So I want some people who know they have the power and the authority. You know you got it. I want you to start pulling up some missiles. Randaya Sunday, some missiles. Yeah, Let me tell you when you will not hesitate to pull out your missiles. Let me tell you when. Na 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 Messiah. When you're sick and tired of turning 10 million times before you can get a duos, Rokarabasaya. When you're sick and tired of having to turn up at children's, when you're sick and tired of having to deal with the child, having all kinds of seizure attacks, oh, glory to God, you will draw for your weapons without hesitation, Rakandaya. When something is on your back, pee pee clock clock 24 7 and you're tired of it, draw for your weapons now. Tell somebody, draw for your missile. Right now, we are directing, we are directing our missiles at some altars. At some altars. In the name of Jesus, we are calling out the various points or rooms in our homes. And we are saying we launch missiles. We throw missiles and we will not miss. We decree a righteous decree that as we go into war right now, that we take on the posture of the Benjamites, the Benjamites who are left handed. The word of God says that when the Benjamites, hallelujah, when they throw a spear, that, oh, glory to God, as sharp as the spears are and as pointed and fine as the points are, they don't miss anything. If they want it to go through a strand of here, of course, there's elaboration. Hallelujah, it still goes. Hallelujah, well, we take on the posture of the Benjamites right now, the left-handed warrior, and we launch missiles into every altar that is in our homes we pull them down we tear them down those on the inside those on the outside those on the trees we pull them down God says tear down their high places those that are on the mountains those that are on the hills and those that are under every green tree we call out green trees we call out high places we pull down altars fire to altars fire in Jesus name I don't hear you. Rabba Baba Shandai. Yakanda Yadaba Sataya. Those altars 
are attracting demonic spirits. All kinds of spirits have been given an invitation because of those altars, because of those ungodly practices, because of those oaths, because of those commitments that were made to Satan and his emissaries. Demons are coming every day because there is a live altar that says, come. There's a live altar that says, you are invited. There's a live altar that has a welcome sign on it. If I were you, oh glory to God, I'd become very radical. I'd become tired of facing the situation with which I am faced. I would begin to pull down. I'll begin to root up. I'll begin to destroy. Tell someone, Abad, Abad, double destroy. Abad, Abad, double destroy. In Jesus' name, Abad, Abad, utterly destroy. Abad, Abad, double rock and tire. Nana Zuta, Dababa Shire. Deuteronomy 12, verse 2. Abad, Abad. I say, utterly destroy. Go in at your kitchen and utterly destroy. Go in at your living room and utterly destroy. Go in at the back room. Go utterly destroy. That's why the child doesn't want to stay there by himself. Go around here and utterly destroy. Utterly destroy. Leave nothing. Leave nothing alive. Kill Rakandayabo Sayere. Kill Atatamama Sataya. Let everything that you see uh, perish. Everything that is alive, uh, that is a threat to you and your children, uh, it needs to die. Uh, you need to tell it uh, that you're killing it today. Uh, and not only tell it, uh, but do it. Uh, begin to behead the devil uh, that continues to visit that altar. Begin to scatter abroad uh, those demons that have the altar as their address. Uh, oh, glory to God. Begin to pull it down. Begin to abad, abad. Double destroy. Tell two person, double destroy. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Rabba manana saya. Yedolokotaya. I don't want anyone to be quiet on me now. I want you to open up your mouth because you got work to do. Let me tell you what God says will happen when you tear down these altars, oh glory to God. God says, okay, when you go to verse 28 of Deuteronomy 12, it says, observe and hear all of these things so that it shall be well with you. So if you don't observe, you're not tear down nothing. You're not lift up no standard. There's something just dead with you. Every night you got your bed, one big old altar there beside you in the spirit. You don't do nothing about it. It shall not be well with you. When you follow God's commands, then it shall be well. You don't follow it, it shall not be well with you. Come on, people of God. The other thing that is said is found in ver verse 30. It says, take heed to yourself that you be not snared. Messiah. When you talk about snare, you're talking about traps and falling into traps that have been set by the enemy. You don't want to be ensnared. You don't want to fall into a trap. You don't want your children to fall into traps. So here's what you got to do. You got to pull down those altars. You got to tear them down. Of course, you can't see them in the spirit. But if I were you, I'd be tired of those mystery marks appearing on my skin. I'd be tired of scratching, itching all over my skin. And doctors can't tell what the condition is or what has caused it. You don't know if yourself being allergic to any food. Everything was fine until you got there. Everything was fine until the other day. Why? Because it turned an anniversary for something that was said at the altar. There was a memorial that came up in the dark kingdom to the master in the dark kingdom. And as a result, something was stirred in the spirit. Something was triggered in the spirit. Begin to address it, Kadian. Masa. Ma 
down, da 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 shire. Pull it down, pull it down, pull it down. Pull it down, pull it down. On behalf of your son, pull it down. On behalf of your daughter, pull it down. Pull it down, pull it down, pull it down. Cancel their spoken words. Cancel the agreement that was made with the house or with the room with devils and demons. You gotta nullify now. I said nullify the agreement. You gotta break and renounce the covenants. You gotta break them. You gotta put up some standards right now. Break, 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 break. Address the thing. About, about. Destroy, destroy. Double destroy. Somebody is gonna die if you don't do anything. Somebody is gonna die because you're up against the enemy. He doesn't like you. He didn't want you to be in that house to begin with. He didn't want you to buy it to begin with. Now you're finally there. It's still war. Somebody is gonna die, but make sure it's not you. Tell two persons someone is gonna lose their life, but it won't be me. And it won't be my children. It won't be my husband. It won't be my wife. It won't be my family. Break, 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 break now, break now, let me see the fire, Holy Ghost fire, 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 yeah, 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 Messiah, fire, Natana Baba, fire, fire in every room, fire in closets, fire on beds, some of you, you're sleeping on beds that were handed down to you, what kind of performance took place on those beds, you need to release the fire. The thing that you can't see in the bed is more dangerous than the thing that you can see. Forget about the lice. Forget about the fleas. Look in the spirit. There's something more dangerous. There's something more harmed. There's something more deadly. There's something more detrimental. Deal with it now. Abad, abad. Double destroy. Matato, kere bebe, ya 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 sanda, kore bebe kataya, landa da da sande, open up your mouth. I ain't go open it for you. Open up your mouth right now. Pull down those things that came through evil rituals. Pull down those things that came through all kinds of concussions. Ramana Saya and all kinds of potions. Pull them down. Everything that came by things being powdered, things being scattered, sprinkled, thrown. Pull them down tear them down said God I know me says so and God says so he said if you want it to be well with you and your children and if you don't want to fall into a sneer he says do something about it now you went there not knowing you went there totally ignorant but truth has come to you tonight illumination has come to you tonight don't just sit on it do something about it Kimberly Fire to every altar. Fire to every altar, to every altar. Fire to altars on the green tree. Fire to altar on top of hills, on top of mountains, on top of high places. Fire to altars that are crying out against me, that are crying out against the ministry to which the Lord has called me. Altars crying out against Shadeen. I send fire to you now in the spirit. I prophesy over you that you shall abide apart. You shall be destroyed. You shall perish. You shall not live. In the name of Jesus, where you intend to cause harm or destruction, in the name of Jesus, I reverse the curse it shall fall upon you instead where you intend to call a sneer to come upon Shadeen it shall come upon you and your children instead Abadabad Abadabad to the demonic spirit it is them we're addressing because we wrestle not against flesh right so sneers that were set by the demons we prophesy that you shall locate them and catch them instead. 
shadows that were set by the Haman spirit. Hallelujah. We prophesy and command that those gallows will not see us, will not locate us, will not locate our children or our families, but will locate the demon, the same demon who set it up in the name of Jesus. The same demon who set it up in the name of Jesus. If you truly take authority today, there's someone who has been itching and scratching. I prophesy right now that as you follow the Lord's instruction, that those itching shall cease in the name of Jesus. I don't even know who you are, but I see someone itching. You've been itching. You can't explain why you have been itching so much. Antibiotics have not been working. No kind of medicine has been working. But I prophesy right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that as you follow the Holy Spirit's instruction to tear down those altars in the spirit that you cannot see, that as you follow the instructions, you will get a relief, not just a temporary relief, but a permanent relief from these scratching and itching in the name of Jesus. I just need one person to agree with me. Can somebody just say, I agree with you, Shadeen? In the name of Jesus, just one person. It doesn't have to be everyone. I just need one person because when two persons agree on anything in the earth realm, hallelujah, and especially when God is in it, it what it shall be done. And so I lose somebody who has been scratching as you follow God's instruction. Hallelujah. Take authority. Hallelujah. Try. Try. Mana nana soya. Try. Mama tataya. Lift up a standard. Try. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Sonny, for agreeing. I thank you, Sharon, for agreeing. Thank you, Camila, for agreeing. Christine, thank you for your agreement. It means so much. Thank you all for agreeing. So we got multiple agreement. Tell somebody, I double double. I double destruction. I double trouble. Rakanda for the enemy. I abad, abad. Natataya. Abad, abad. Double, double. Yekonda. Perish, perish. Destroy, destroy in the name of Jesus. Latana Mosaye Katana. Rasana Nana Matone Leboshaya. Strange occurrences. I want to release some people who have been experiencing some strange things in your home or in your midst. Hallelujah. Scratching, itching, ratane de de bosaya. Strange occurrences are in your house. Natana nana satata. I want to release an anointing. In fact, the anointing is already available to break that yoke. Strange occurrences. Where are those people? Strange occurrences. I want you to step forward at the altar and you know where the altar is. Just just take two steps forward from where you're seated or lying down and come hallelujah and as you stand at the altar we decree that the ground on which you stand is holy strange occurrences now is your opportunity it means that after we're done with this broadcast i don't expect to see anyone asking me to pray about anything that is strange happening to them and their children come on now is your moment this is the prayer I want to know the people who are at the altar because something strange is going on, especially since you moved to that address. Something strange is happening in the spirit. You can't put your finger on it, but you know something is off. You know you're not losing your mind, but something ain't right. Now is the moment. Now is the time for you to experience freedom. I want you to come forward, please. And I want you to let me know when you're at the altar. Matande Shedaya. Jesus, 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 hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. I see you, Kedian. I see you. I see you, Grace. I see you, Roshina. I see you, Anisha. Who are the other people who have been experiencing some strange things? Hallelujah, do not tell yourself you're gonna reach me afterward. It's not gonna happen, now is the moment. Now is the moment for you to forget about your pride and come to the altar. I did not come here by 
myself tonight, in my own strength tonight, by my own authority tonight. I came here on the master's business. Now is the moment. Now is the moment. Hallelujah. Novlet, I see you. C. Foster, I see you. Sanaya, I see you. Janet, I see you. Melissa, I see you. Shata, Tarabosaya. Yegoda Honda. Oh, glory to God. Orlando says something is wrong in my life and I don't know. Now these are the things that I got to point out. Now is your moment, Orlando. Don't tell us. Come. Come to the altar. Come to the altar, people of God. Something is wrong. Something ain't right. Come. All of you lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. You're tired, you're tired. I see some people already getting their deliverance. That altar. The thing about altars is that they can hear. They can hear. The thing about altars, they're alive. They're alive, they can respond. They can respond. The devils that are there can respond right now, right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we broke up every altar that is in your house right now. I say, my father, I ask you to do this one thing right now. And that is for you to release, dispatch a team of angels who will descend right now into the homes of other people who are under the sound of my voice right now. Those who are participating, that is, hallelujah. And as they lift up their faith, because they know something is wrong, let your angels go with some strange, unique hammers, unique pickaxes, unique weapons, unique devices, unique instruments, because we're going to broke up some altar. Let them descend with even shovel, Rabbi Shaya. Because when we finish breaking them down, Rakanda, we're gonna shovel up some things and we're gonna burn up some things. In the name of Jesus. Come down. Release them, my father. Release them, my father. Let the angels descend. Let them show up now. Let them break. And so as we give the command to break, there is a breaking and we loose every angel of the living God that is withheld in the second heavens. We say loose those angels now in the name of Jesus. We loose them. We intercede for them in the name of Jesus. We speak to the prince of Jamaica and the prince of the Caribbean. We speak to the different princes in the air and we say loose the angels of the Lord for them to come. And as they come, we dismantle and destroy in the name of Jesus. Those altars that are causing the sicknesses the strange behaviors, altars, we break you. We break you in our rooms. We break you in our bathrooms. We break you in our kitchens. We break you on the veranda. We break you in the living room. We break you in the back rooms. We break you right now. We break and destroy. We are bad about Masana Natataya break. Break, 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 break. Abad, abad, utterly destroyed. Abad, 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 abad. Right now, we break you into pieces. We command that the devil's responsible perish in the fire. Perish in the fire right now. In the name of Jesus. Oh glory. Oh glory. Mm. Oh glory. Oh glory. You mess with the wrong one, devil. I said, you mess with the wrong child, devil. You mess with the wrong marriage, devil. You mess with the wrong homeowner, devil. I say, you mess with the wrong person, devil. My son, I, devil. Your time is up. Your time has come to an expiration. In my bedroom, in my bed. About about angels of the Lord. About about everything that doesn't look like God. Everything that doesn't look like Jesus' image and likeness. About about. About about Masatatamo Karaya. About about utterly destroy. Utterly destroy. Utterly destroy. 
in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I give you two more minutes to deal with those altars. And as you break them down and the angels of the Lord and hallelujah assist you, set them on fire. Let them become like chaff that the wind driveth away. Let them become ash in the spirit. Ash, set them on fire. Become ash, you altar. Altar to all kinds of religion, false religion. Altar, die, be destroyed utterly. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, ma -na 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 -na. there's a lot of fire that is going up right now. There are some homes that are on fire in the spirit. There's a lot of fire in your home. I can literally tell. I'm looking in the spirit and some people have kindled fire in their homes. Messiah, there are some people, you're feeling a sense of relief. Let me go, is what you're saying to the devil. Come off my back, I break and destroy your altar. Loose me and loose my child. Take your hand off my child's son. Which part of your child is sick? Is it his foot? Is it a moat? Away. Tell the devil to take him hands off. Wherever it is that is swollen, wherever it is that is in pain, Wherever it is has bites and marks and sores. Loose Satan in the name of Jesus. Take your hands off the people of God. Hallelujah. You're a trespasser now. And we bind up every trespasser in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to see what is really happening. I want to see what is happening. Oh, glory to God. Devil, you're a liar. You're a liar. People of God, take authority. If you destroy them, if you destroy their altars, the goddess and the gods that are in your midst, it shall be well with you and you shall not fall into the snare of the enemy. I'd like to call those people who would like to give their hearts to Jesus forward, please. You wanna give your heart to him, come forward. You wanna recommit your life to Jesus, come forward now as well. In the name of Jesus, I want to pray with you. Come quickly, please. And as you come, lift up your hands. Say this prayer with me. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I surrender all. Forgive me, Lord. I've done many things that are not right before you. Purge me, Lord. Separate me unto yourself. Separate me unto holiness and righteousness. Remove every leaven that is in my spirit, every leaven that is in my temple. I dedicate my temple to you even as I dedicate my home to you in the name of Jesus. Purge me, Lord. Wash me. Sanctify me. Purify me. For those of you who have backslidden and you wanna recommit, just say, Lord, as of this moment, I renew my covenant with you. Thank you for loving me all over again. In fact, you never stopped loving me. But thank you for restoring me and for making me feel justified. Thank you, Lord. It means the world to me. Hallelujah. I want you to put your hands together for those people who have given their hearts to Jesus. They're saying, yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. Yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speak to me, when it speaks to me, with my whole heart, I will agree. And my answer will be, what is it? Yes, Lord, yes. Hallelujah. 
we say yes to you, Jesus. We say yes to your lordship and leadership. Yes to you, Lord. Come into my life, come into my home, come into my space. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, tomorrow at 7.30 p.m., I look forward to praying for those who are sick among us. Some of you, you would have already gotten your deliverance from tonight's broadcast. But I will still go ahead and have a healing service for other persons tomorrow. And that is at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you have not yet gotten your Bible quiz time app to help you test your knowledge of the Bible, Prince, can you put it on the screen, please, for them to get the information or the link to get the app, the free app on their phone so they can practice, study, answer questions, see how much you know the Bible. Amen. For your inquiries, 876-433-7272. That's 876-433-7272. I usually end by telling you how much I love you. But I got to tell you as well how much the Lord loves you more. He died for you. He died for you. And you come as you are to him. Don't let his blood go in vain. There was a price for it, a hefty price for it. Make use of it. Make use of it today. In fact, accept Jesus today because you do not know what tomorrow will bring. It is death for many, life for many, but you don't know. Will you give your heart to him? Choose your God this day. If God be God, serve him. And if the devil be your God, then serve him. But it can't be both. And it cannot be in between. Can't be. People of God, this broadcast is streamed from Kingston, Jamaica. My name is Shadeen Anglin. It was a, pl a pleasure, hallelujah, to bring the word to you this evening. I want to thank the Lord, my God, and my best friend, the Holy Spirit of the living God. I thank him. He's the constant factor in my life and I am just so grateful. I can do nothing without him. I'll have no word to bring to you without him. There's no anointing without him. Put your hands together for the Holy Ghost. He's so important, so important. I love him and I just wanna applaud him right now in Jesus name. God bless you all so much. Have a wonderful rest of the evening. Hallelujah.